Amin Kamsamida. Yeah, thank you so much. Let's pray, Father in heaven, thank you so much that we can be here this morning. Thank you for all the people that are helping in the kitchen with our audio and visual. And pray you may bless Dr. Joyce and Mercy as they lead us in the discussion day about health, healthy living and recipes. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Um, I think Sharice might. Sharice, are you going to be taking care of collecting? They're asking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, you know, when we had first advertised for this, we had said that this was going to be a food demonstration and lunch, right? And so that's what we're planning. We were, we were up for a long time last night, so we didn't keep the laws of health last night. <laughs> but um, this morning, too, they also wanted us to talk about autoimmune disease, just a little bit. So it's going to be a very short talk on autoimmune disease and how lifestyle can help with that type of thing from the perspective of healing the gut. Um, is the microphone okay? There's a little bit of a, a ring, right? Is that too bad? Okay, so a lot of the things that we're talking about, there's, there's evidence, there's scientific evidence, but I don't wanna bore you with all those details. So we're just gonna do the principles of, of how autoimmune disease works, how to get better from a lifestyle perspective, and some things that uh, Mercy has been doing at Years Restored. I'm gonna show you a video of a woman who came last year with rheumatoid arthritis and um, her testimony. And then after that, we will get started with the food demonstration, okay? All right, so we wanna make this pretty quick. So what is autoimmune disease? Autoimmune disease is, is a condition where the body becomes confused and starts producing proteins that attack self. You've heard of people who have autoimmune disease, like rheumatoid and these types of things. This is something that is becoming more and more uh, prominent. Um, it's one of the fastest growing uh, chronic diseases in the Western world. Um, I think uh, there, there are more than 150 types because autoimmune disease can attack any tissue in your body. And so what are the things that would be required for you to develop an autoimmune disease? One would be a genetic predisposition. Um, a weakness either, you know, if you have a weakness for your gut, you're going to have um, a more likelihood to have any kind of chronic condition, right? Because the gut is so important for so many of these things. But um, a genetic predisposition for autoimmune disease then some kind of inflammatory trigger. And that would be foods, possibly, if you're sensitive to certain foods, like you're aware of celiac disease. People are sensitive to wheat. That would be a trigger for celiac disease. And then um, infections, stress, having the wrong kind of lifestyle. Any of these things are gonna cause inflammation. And inflammation is going to be contributing to whatever disease you have, whether it's diabetes, high blood pressure, arthritis, all these things. And then the third thing is to have some kind of gut permeability issue. Now, how many of you uh, know people who have food sensitivities and that type of thing, right? Gut permeability usually manifests as a food sensitivity because if you have a leaky gut, now you have access into the body um, for, these, uh, for these food proteins that should have been broken down to their amino acids and they didn't get broken down and they just got into your system and now your body gets confused and you have inflammation and um, that's how it contributes. So increased gut permeability contributes to a large number of diseases. And, you know, whether you have eczema, psoriasis, you know, a lot of these things that we just acne, you know, things that we just take for granted, this is normal life. It can be contributed to by gut permeability. But especially uh, leaky gut and autoimmune disease, we're very interested in this because so many people are having this issue. And um, we, we really believe that lifestyle and many of these natural things that we can do can help uh, with these very severe conditions. So how does digestion con 
contribute to the development of these diseases. Well, digestion, if you think of your digestive system, it starts at the mouth, ends where the food exits your body, right? And it, it's a long tube that goes all the way down. Now, when we think of eating, usually you think of eating as like, I just got to get this food in, right? And uh, we're not thinking about how it even gets into the system. We don't think about, yes, I think it was Friday that we talked about the importance of chewing and how important it is how long the food stays in the mouth because that's where the saliva mixes with the food and your body, as you're chewing, has a chance to prepare for the food because your immune cells in your throat and in your tongue, they are communicating with the rest of your body and saying, hey, Joyce is eating an apple now, get ready for an apple. So that's why when you eat smoothies, you want to be chewing those smoothies. When you're drinking juices, you wanna be chewing those juices and give your body time to get um, ready for the food you're about to eat, right? Nobody likes to have anything sprung upon them surprisingly, right? So that's why when we do hydrotherapy, how many of you have done hydrotherapy? Hot and cold treatments, right? You're doing hot fomentations for three minutes and then ice cold for 30 seconds. When you put the cold on, do you just slap on the cold fomentation? You just say, okay, now we're gonna do the cold and you just slap it on. Is that how you do it? You don't do it that way. With, you have to be very gentle. You do the hot, and then you say, now the cold is coming. Be prepared, the cold is coming. With hydrotherapy, you don't want your patient to get chilled. That can cause you to have the opposite effect. And so these considerations can be quite significant for how success, successful you're gonna be. 90% um, of the absorption happens in the small intestine. So you want all that food to be broken down before it gets to the small intestine. And a great way to help your digestive system is to take time to chew. That is where you have the most control over what happens, right? So what goes into the mouth, you have a choice about. How long it stays in the mouth, you have a choice about. And then what happens here, is going to be influenced by other factors. So this is the mechanism of leaky gut. If you start on this side, you can see this is a healthy, I don't know, I don't think this has a pointer or anything like that, but you can see on the left side that there are little tiny connections between the cells. Do you see that? Little tiny connections? Those are what we call tight junctions. Now, the this top layer of cells is the intestinal epithelium. This is where digestion takes place, but this is also the protective barrier for the entire digestive system. It's only one cell layer thick. It's very important that we learn to protect this, right? And so you can see that if you eat certain foods, like if you eat wheat, it causes your body to produce zonulin. And zonulin is re represented by those blue little balls up on top. Once zon zonulin is produced, it will cause there to be a loss of those tight junctions. And depending on your genetic makeup, it will last maybe um, just an hour or two or longer, depending on what kind of genetic um, predisposition you have. And so, <clears throat> So now you have, you can see those white little particles that are getting into um, the system here now. So this up on top is where your food is when, when it gets into the tube, your digestive system. And then on, in, on the right side is, it's, would be your, your um, blood vessels and, and that kind of thing. And so you don't want to be getting undigested food particles, like those white little things that represent gluten, um, to be getting into the system. And so then you can see that later on down, you have even damage to the intestinal cells, right? And so remember what I said yesterday, if you were to cut yourself and you were to do this every single day, it's gonna take tremendous resources of the body to heal. 
And this is what we do a lot of times with stress and antibiotics and the foods that we eat and foods that we're sensitive to and, and the pesticides and, and when we're eating foods that don't have the nutrients that we need. And remember what I said yesterday about the mineral content of food being so important, right? We're so concerned about these macronutrients like fats and, and proteins and sugars, but these other micronutrients like the minerals are so important and we're finding you know they I looked at some studies that were done where they compared the mineral content of food from the 1940s to the 1990s and the mineral content of food had dropped depending on what mineral you're looking at anywhere from 25 to 75 percent from 1940 to 1990 and it's about the same amount from 1990 until now so it because when they farm when they do industrialized agriculture how many um, minerals are they putting back into the soil three. three and how many is it that you need you need at least 17 to 22 and maybe even more maybe even 50 more you don't know exactly right but we're not getting that in the food you know that we were taught in this church to grow our own food and we were taught that way because I think that the Lord wants us to be leaders the Lord doesn't want us to be at the mercy of of other people and how they grow food um, because with industrialized agriculture it's not like people are really thinking about what's going to be the most beneficial for the health right and so um, we do want to be learning about those things the gut and brain connection, the gut is called the second brain because there are just as many neurons in the gut as there are in the spinal cord or in the peripheral nervous system. And 90% um, of the serotonin production is in the gut. If you don't have good serotonin production, it is going to affect how you're feeling and your moods and how you're thinking. And, um, how you're moving. 90% of the communication between the gut and brain is to send signals from the gut to the brain. And if you think about how you're treating your gut, like some of us, we eat all times of the day. We're not thinking about how it's impacting the, the life here, the, the flora, the, the microbiome in here. And we're not thinking about how our thoughts are affecting all of this. This is a whole a rainforest of life that is right here. And, and so we have to be thinking about all of these things as we um, make decisions on what to eat, how to think, how to live. Um, the gut houses 70% of the immune system. Now, the immune system is so important, right? It is your body's protection. It is your body's um, army of defense, right? And so if the gut is not happy, if there's so much inflammation that is happening there, what is going to be happening to your immune system? It's going to be suffering. And we are going to be having issues with all kinds of diseases because disease, like when we think of heart disease, we think, oh, my, my artery is clogged. That's it. But the immune system is involved in every single probably chronic disease that you have. And so um, uh, autoimmune disease is a disease where you have lost the ability to identify what is a bacteria, what is a virus, what is a fungus, what should not be there, and what is self. And so your body gets confused and starts attacking self. And it has to do with the immune system not being healthy. Um, the gut health is essential for a healthy immune system. Um, so when we're thinking about healing the gut, there are four R's that you can think about. Number one, you want to remove inflammatory foods, habits, and triggers. Number two, you want to repair the gut. Number three, you want to restore the microbiome. And that does go along with repairing the gut. And then you also want to revitalize the system. And so um, what are signs? Did you want that? So what are signs of inflammation? Well, the classic signs of inflammation are redness, heat, pain, and swelling. And inflammation is involved in all chronic disease, including autoimmune disease. Now, the thing is that a lot of times, number one, we get so used to having pain and inflammation that we don't even recognize 
we're having it. You know, I remember that when I was, I was in so much pain. Remember I told you like I had this chronic pain issue and I had no idea about food until I got everything out of my system. I went to the lifestyle center. We, I did all these healing things. And then I, the third day, remember I told you I woke up and I was pain free, right? Well, I hadn't been eating. We had been drinking these poultice drinks, right? So my body was able to reset. And on the sixth day, we started eating again. And I had no clue about how this worked. And so I was eating and I was so excited to eat. And then as the day progressed, I was thinking, why am I having this pain? And I realized, oh, it's because I ate. And there were, even within those good foods that I was eating, because I was so inflamed, there were foods that I still could not tolerate and those were causing me to have pain again. And so I had to learn how to eat while I was repairing the gut, how to eat to repair the gut. It is a tricky business when you're sensitive to almost everything. And a lot of us get that way because we have gone so many years with these toxic lifestyles and we're so used to it. The thing is though, you don't even realize it until you're pain free. You're thinking, wow, what did I put up with for all these years? And because you're so used to it, we, we just take it for granted. The dietary clauses of inflammation, these are just some. Alcohol, alcohol is very hard on the system because it will cause gut permeability. You know, alcohol denatures cells, right? And so that's what it does to your system when, when you intake alcohol. Sugar will cause inflammation. Sugar is an is a inflammatory mediate, um, inflammatory type food. It is associated with many diseases, including cancers. And um, refined carbohydrates, they found in the nurse's health study that the three most uh, inflammatory foods in their nursing population was um, refined carbs, that would be like pastas and that type of thing. It would be um, also soda and uh, flavor enhancers like aspartame. So flavor enhancers and artificial sweeteners, those would be things like yeast, yeast extracts, MSG, this type of thing. That is why we don't advocate eating out because like even if you go to an organic place, a lot of times they're using uh, flavor enhancers and well, maybe not the organic places, but um, uh, if you look on a box, it's very unlikely that you're going to find ingredients that don't include some kind of flavor enhancer or um, uh, preservative, these things are also going to be um, causing issues. So flavor enhancers, artificial sweeteners, preservatives, foods you are sensitive to, how would you know you're sensitive to a food? Testing would be a good way to start, and there are different types of tests. There's blood testing, there's stool testing, and um, we, we like this lab that does stool testing because it tests for IgA. IgA is produced in the gut, in the mucosal, um, mucous membranes, and so I feel like it's most sensitive because um, by the time the IgA gets into the blood, it's kind of late, I think. That's my own personal thing. Um, testing, but you can also do an elimination diet where you just cut things out and see how you feel. The problem is, what if you're sensitive to a lot of different foods? So a lot of people will say, well, I cut gluten out and I didn't feel any different. The problem is, if you are sensitive to so many different foods and you're still including those foods, you won't notice a difference possibly with just cutting one thing out. Um, Lipopolysaccharide is something that's found in a lot of animal products because it is a toxin that is associated with gram-negative bacteria, and these are usually found in your animal products. And so, and if you ha eat meat, that meat stays in the store, you don't know how long, right? And the longer that it's out, the more bacteria that grows, you're gonna have more lipopolysaccharide. It is an inflammatory mediator. It is associated with many chronic diseases. And um, it's something that, you know, you cannot cook out of the food either. It's not heat sensitive. And so um, fats, are also um, causes of inflammation, trans fats, saturated fats, and then especially when your fats go rancid. And um, you, it's hard to tell when your fats are going rancid, but once your oils are released from their food, like olive oil, once it gets out of the press and into a bottle, 
those double bonds that make that fat so healthy because the, the double bonds is what causes that fat to be a little kinky, right? And that, when it gets into your cell membrane, allows your cell membrane to be a lot more fluid. You know, because the saturated fat is very linear. So you can pack those saturated fats into a cell membrane. It'll make the cell membrane a lot more rigid. So then you have um, your receptors, which are within that cell membrane. They don't work that well. Does that make sense? So you want your cell membrane to be nice and fluid. You want the kinkiness of those um, uh, double bonds in the polyunsaturated fats. Polyunsaturated just means that these fats have a lot of double bonds, and so they're going to be making your cell membranes more fluid, and your receptors are going to work better. That's why your your you know diabetes, all of these things might improve. The problem is, is that if you're eating free fats, once the fats are released from the food, then th those double bonds are areas that are most fun vulnerable for light and moisture and air to cause um, oxidization, rancidity, and um, then that causes problems. So that's why we don't recommend you cook with free fats. We, we get all of our fats, when we cook, we do it all with food. And so we don't, we don't saute and, and that type of thing. We don't even use um, olive oil for our salad dressings. We, we just get it all from the food, like avocados and olives, and, and um, it tastes great. If you go and, and visit, you'll find that the food tastes really good. It's all gone. <laughs> People aren't leaving food on the plate. Um, advanced glycation end products, this would be... Um, we're going to talk about this. How many of you have heard of advanced glycation end products? This is also something that causes a lot of inflammation, aging, degeneration, pain. Um, so here's lipopolysaccharide. It is a major component of the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria. And I just wanted to show you a picture of what it is just so that, you know, you kind of get an image of... Um, of what it is. It protects the membrane from certain kinds of chemical attacks and it, it mediates in a lot of things that happen in the body. So how much you have, how much lipopolysaccharide you have is going to influence how much inflammation you have. Um, AGE, like I said, proteins and fats and foods that become glycated. That means there's abnormal sugar that's getting connected to these proteins and fats. And it happens when we cook the foods especially, but it also happens in the body. If you have excess sugar in the body, then you're gonna have more glycation of protein and fats. So it happens before the food gets in and it happens after the food gets in. Sources of advanced glycation end products would be animal foods high in fat and protein and it's further affected by cooking. So I'll give you an example of some foods that are high and low. So beef, you can see that the um, if you fry it, there's 9,522 advanced glycation end products versus if you stew it, it's 2,443. And then if you roast chicken versus boiling the chicken, or if you broil the chicken versus boiling the chicken, there's 10,000 um, in broiled versus 6,700 in the boiled beef. And we go down the list, and then you see potato. Potato, if you French fry it, it's 694. If you boil it, there's 17. So you can see a big difference between plant foods and um, animal foods in these advanced glycation end products. Um, Foods that decrease inflammation, we, I say, this is like Mercy's list, because if you ever talk to Mercy, everything that she says is super good. <laughs> so she talks about super greens, super herbs, and super healing foods. So you're all going to listen to her maybe, and you'll hear her say that word a lot. Um, so let's look at the antioxidant content of vegetables, and this is pretty good. Um, Artichokes boiled, 3.89 millimoles per 100 grams. Um, 
asparagus, broccoli, 0.65. So everything is less than one except for artichoke. But let's look at these herbs. And you can see like um, bay leaves, 31, and um, dandelion leaves, 21. Um, we go up to oregano, it's 40. Look at peppermint leaves, it's 160. Um, and wild marjoram, 142, sweet marjoram. So you can see that a lot of these herbs contain a lot of antioxidants. Now the thing is, with these herbs, you're not usually eating large quantities of them, and so uh, they, you know, you'd have to eat a lot, lot more to get them, but that's why it's really good to be looking at getting your food from a variety of sources, and, um, it's 1035. So the basic program, so this is, I came up with an acronym because I, I have a, I'm coming up with a web, uh, a membership site to help people with leaky guts. And it's called Wholeness for Life. And um, wholeness is an acronym for the nine laws of health. So um, it's water, the W for water, um, H for habits, because, you know, if you are doing all these good things, but then you still drink coffee or alcohol or, you know, you have difficulty getting to sleep at night. You're still going to be having issues, right? And oxygen would have to do with getting out into fresh air, um, negatively charged ions, as well as, you know, airway issues. A lot of people have airway issues and it's causing a lot of health problems, right? I actually found out I have a condition called posterior tongue tie and that has caused a lot of issues for me. Posterior tongue tie is something that's very difficult to diagnose and, and um, it can cause issues with airway. And so um, the spine, all of these things are going to be associated with how well you're oxygenating your system. So that's why it's really important to have good posture, good airway, all of those things are super important. So love is also very important. Many of us, um, from our past, we have issues with maybe forgiveness, bitterness, resentment, depression, all of these things. So these things God has to heal. And we have to give God the opportunity to heal for us to Im um, improve our overall health. The environment is also very important. Did you know? You know, if you look at food studies, you'll find that inflammation from food and the anti-inflammatory effects of food you know, maybe, maybe, you know, you are two or three times as likely to develop diabetes because of certain foods. But if you look at toxins in the environment, it's like 10, 14, 15 times more likely that you're going to have a problem. So you can see it's, it's a lot more um, powerful, the effects that a toxin has on you than even food. So it's very important for us to be mindful of things like mold and um, the pollution and, and all of that. And so, you know, even in your homes, inside air, how, how good that is, we want to be looking at all of those things. Um, I'm very guilty of this. This is around me a lot, and this is not very good for us as well. So um, nutrition, uh, so we're going to talk about some of the nutrition. We're going to be sharing with you what uh, one nice lunch menu looks like. Um, exercise is very helpful for inflammation. Sunlight, you want to be getting sunlight. Here, you have no reason not to get sunlight here, right? I'm up in the Northwest. It's so hard for me to get sunlight. And so um, I was very bad. Usually, like, I try to make it a point that I get out into the sun as much as I can. This year, isn't it weird? It's like when you're doing ministry and you're trying to do all these good things, you're not as good to yourself. So I got to work on that. Um, sleep, going to bed early, you know, getting the melatonin and growth hormone productions. It's very important to get good sleep. And all of this you cannot do without the grace of God. It's a miracle, right? This is impossible for us to do. So as you're listening to this, if you feel overwhelmed, if you feel like it's impossible, it is okay. You know, you just bring it to the Lord and say, God, you call us to this, and you remember that what we t shared with you yesterday. All of God's biddings are enablings, right? So we pray about it, and God will give us the ability to do what we need to do. So water, so this is the protocol, water. You want to drink about, what, 8 to 10 glasses. We do it with 15 minutes with lemon juice. Um, also, 
okay, so here's some principles of how we eat. We soak everything. You soak your seeds, your beans, your grains, and nuts. So those four things you want to soak before eating. So we soak overnight, and then we use it. Now, the seeds, like sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds, like if you go to the store and you get sunflower seed butter, did they soak their sunflower seeds before they packaged it? No. So you, you go home and you order a bunch of sunflower seeds and you soak it and then you rinse it and you dehydrate it. And then you can keep it in the freezer and then you can pull it out and make a sunflower seed butter for yourself whenever you want to. You can use it as a, as a, a dressing or a cream or whatever. And you can use it whenever you want to that way. But you want to get used to preparing your own foods that way. Um, we do that with, with the beans, I just soak it maybe 12 hours, depending on what kind of bean it is. There are certain beans like kidney and red beans that are very high in lectins, and so they might need 24 hours soaking or maybe even longer soaking. The longer you soak it, see what we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of these anti-nutrients. These, yes? Oh, you could soak it and then you put it in the freezer? You could do that. The only thing is this. I don't know how well it works as far as making a nut butter. Because for the, the, the nut butters, usually you want them to be drier. So that's why I've always dehydrated them. And it probably takes less space because, you know, these seeds, they, t the, the, they plump up quite a bit with water. So it'll take less space. Um, Anti-nutrients, like um, I think they call them lectins and hemagglutinins, and there's a lot of different, or phytic acid. These are, these are things that uh, are hard on the digestive system, cause more inflammation. There are certain beans you're going to die from if you don't cook any. <laughs> you know, it's like if you, if you don't prepare them the right way, you can die from the cooking, right? And it's plant-based, it's vegetarian, and it'll kill you. So, um, yeah, so you want to learn to, um, the beans are really hard in your system. The nuts as well. The nuts are hard in the system. So if you're someone who's very sick and you're really, you know you have a leaky gut, while your gut is healing, avoid the grains, avoid the nuts. So maybe for a, a few months period of time. Um, you would want to avoid grains and nuts. I have other reasons for why I have leaky gut. So I've been on this system for two, two and a half years, and this is what it did for me. I used to have to go to an infrared sauna almost every other day. I used to have to, um, that's for me to keep on operating, because I have to operate, and my hand's doing this. I would have pain. I would have the feeling of like electrical you know, shocks going up my arm and that kind of thing. So I had a lot of pain, a lot of weakness, and for me to function, I had to figure out what was going to work. So this diet caused me not to have pain. The weakness is improving, but I still cannot tolerate certain things. It's getting better, but I still can't tolerate certain things. And I think there are reasons for why it's happening. I have a lot of other issues I'm not going to tell you about, bore you with. But it's helped me to understand how the body works. It's just amazing what is all involved for you to have good health. And so this diet is just one aspect. It is to decrease inflammation. And then you have to go figure out what is the root cause of why you're having this problem. And so um, you want to soak your grains and nuts. Use pseudograins as grain substitutes. So the pseudograins are seeds. Um, they're not from grasses. So grains are from grass plants. And um, these other seeds are from broadleaf plants. And they would include amaranth quinoa and buckwheat and you would want to soak those as well you can sprout them um, buckwheat is really I, I love it because it's so easy to soak and sprout amaranth is really tiny and so I I it's it takes a little longer to rinse it and everything but it's it's a fun one to eat everyone that I serve it to they're like wow this is yummy and quinoa, I think it's a more popular one. You're probably all familiar with quinoa. Also, when your gut is not that healthy, you might be having, you know, yeast growth because you're going to have 
the wrong kind of bacteria and fungi and bac viruses that are in the system. So you might be more prone to have yeast problems. And so in the beginning, you might not be able to even tolerate things that are too high in sugar, uh, including sugary fruits and melons and, and grapes and those types of things. So in the beginning, you might want low sugar fruits, like berries are low sugar fruits, kiwis are low sugar fruits, pomegranates, those are some examples. And everyone is different. So what works for one person may not work for another, but you get the general idea. And sometimes people will go on these diets and they'll be like, I tried a plant-based diet, it didn't work for me. Uh, but typically I find these people don't really want to be on a plant-based diet. They're really hoping that their meat-based diet will somehow work for them. And so, you know, because all of us, the same thing doesn't work for it, but the principles are there, right? Um, mm -hmm. No, no, you want to always soak your grains. Yeah, because all of those, the, the grains, the nuts, the seeds, and the beans, they all have some kind. Yes, yes, it's better. And especially nowadays, see, um, Nowadays, what is happening is that there's, they're spraying all of our fields with glyphosate, right, to help with the harvesting. And so I, I wonder if that is why there are so many issues with grains, too, because nowadays it's not only um, wheat that is an issue. Uh, now, because oats are, are being used by so many people, we're finding that people are getting very sensitive to oats as well. I, for instance, cannot tolerate oats now. And so um, it, it's just a totally different thing um, nowadays, it seems. Okay, so here are some things that can help heal the gut. Turmeric. Turmeric, I told you yesterday, was antiviral, antibacterial. It is anti-cancer. It is anti-inflammatory. It really helps with pain. And it, um, ginger works the same way. But ginger can also stimulate the immune system. So you don't want to use ginger every single day. What we do is we may use ginger for a week, then give ourselves a week rest, and then use it again. Um, but turmeric is, you can use pretty much all the time. Some people can't tolerate turmeric. Someone mentioned yesterday that she didn't tolerate turmeric that well. Garlic and onion are also very helpful. Um, garlic is very helpful at um, uh, killing bacteria and viruses and that kind of thing. So here it might be helpful as well. We try to get like a one to two cloves raw at a meal, and so it makes for bad breath. But most people seem to like garlic breath. <laughs> at least they say they don't mind. Okay, but um, no free fats. We don't recommend any free fats. Uh, we do green smoothies, green leafy veggies every single day. Some people, I say, like how many, you know, how much salad are you getting? And they say, well, I love salad. And they think that that counts. It doesn't matter how much you love salad. It's how much salad are you getting a day? Because sometimes you buy it and it just sits in your fridge for a week, right? So um, you want to be getting lots of green leafy veggies. And I find that an easy way is to put it in a smoothie, especially if you have um, issues with your teeth, is, you know, get it into a smoothie, Make sure you're chewing it while you eat it. And um, while you're healing, you might want to do some green juices 30 minutes before your meals, anywhere from one to three times a day. And it depends on how sick you are. So if you need more nutrients and that kind of thing, you might need something like that. Fruit smoothies. See, we try to do fruits in one meal, veggies in another. We're trying not to combine the two. And so um, the fruit smoothies you could do in the morning, you could do with some berries, maybe apple, if you're able to tolerate green apple. Green apple is not gonna be as sweet. And um, you could do it with some chia or some flax, and that's why, that way you're getting your omega-3. You could do it with some sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds, and you can alternate. And um, that way you're getting a lot of these nutrients. It's sometimes difficult to 
chew everything and put it together and eat and prep and all of that. So um, eating two meals is very helpful because that way it's one form of intermittent fasting. How many of you have heard of intermittent fasting? This is where you're trying to eat within an eight hour window. So breakfast, late lunch, something like that. And then you fast for the rest of the time and it gives your body a 16 hour window of time to heal and not have to deal with food. Because every time you eat, it takes a lot of resources from your body to digest that food and to defend your system. And then you don't have time to take care of all the damage that's happening and all the pesticides and the toxins that are getting in. Charcoal is very helpful. You can take it internally, maybe um, a teaspoon or more uh, every day. Uh, and here are things that we recommend removing. Of course, it's much better if you get it tested. An enterolabal test for um, these things, gluten, corn, soy, oats, um, animal products. Why animal products? A lot of lipopolysaccharide, a lot of saturated fat. You're going to have more arachidonic acid. See, the fat that you eat becomes your fat because that fat will get incorporated into your cell membrane. And it will determine how fluid and elastic your membranes are, how well everything works. And so that's why it's better. No snacking, because we need to give our systems rest. Um, processed and prepackaged foods, you know, I tend not to because they tend to have preservatives in them. They tend to have flavor enhancers in them. And they tend not to prepare their food in such a way they're not soaking, you know, and sprouting things before. it. Like if you eat bread from the store, even if it's, you know, say gluten-free or whatever, they haven't soaked uh, um, their their pseudo seeds or anything before they use them. So that's why we're trying to teach you how to do some of these things. And also to remove negative and untrue thinking, right? That's very important. Mm, yes? Oh, because as I was saying, you know, some of those like gluten, corn, soy, eggs, uh, dairy products, all that stuff, a lot of people know about. And so then they're like, okay, we're not going to eat those things. We're going to eat a lot of oats. But nowadays, you know, if you talk to, I talked to Dr. Ken Fine, Kevin Fine or Ken Fine, he, he um, runs Intero Lab, the stool testing um, facility that we've been working with, and he's saying there's a lot of people who are getting sensitive to oats nowadays. And um, so we know that for the gluten, corn, and soy, the corn and soy, you know, over 90% of it is GMO. So maybe that's part of the reason why that there's so many issues with it. Um, the gluten, maybe it's the way that it was, you know, it, they changed how it was being produced and made, right? It's a totally different plant than it was in the 1960s or 50s, right? Because that's when they started research on how to get these wheat plants to produce more. They were trying to take care of the world hunger situation. And so these wheat plants are shorter. They produce about 10 times as much wheat as uh, the original wheat plant. And um, some say that it's a different um, sugar. It's a different carbohydrate that it's producing as well. Mm -hmm. So, and this is what we talked about yesterday as well, is that over 90% of corn and soy is genetically modified. And so your neighbor farmer may be growing genetically modified corn, and you are growing organic, but there is, you know, this cross-pollination and, and these types of things that are happening. Um, what Mercy is saying that when she's working with her lifestyle patients, a lot of them, when they try to go back to eating organic, that they, they don't do as well. And we are dealing with very sick people. Her first patient was a patient on hospice. And so this patient was able to get off of hospice with her help, but you know, you see, it's, these are very sick people. And so you, you wanna do everything that you can. Yes? What about rye? Rye? I've, I've heard rye? Wheat, barley, rye. Right. So everything with gluten, and that would include rye and barley. Mm -hmm. So we don't do rye or barley. We just include that into the gluten section. Well, um, the thing is, who, who doesn't have leaky gut nowadays? 
And so um, there are different ways that you could approach this, I guess. Some of us are genetically just weaker, and that would be me. And I got to a point where I was thinking about, you know, the possibility of not being able to take care of myself. So for me, especially when I saw, wow, well, I'm pain-free here, I was like, this is good. But I totally understand, the stronger that I get, it's harder for me to stick to this sometimes. The stronger that I get, I think, well, maybe I could try that. And I, I have not, but it's because I'm, I, I'm doing this work and I surround myself with people who are doing this. And I really do believe that Satan is working to make it very difficult for us to stay healthy. And so I do my best to, to try to, you know, it's not hard to do. It's just, I, it's all in here for me. And so I, I think that if I were to start going that way, I would probably end up cheating a lot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I try to stay on my own path here. Any other questions? So lectins is a type of anti-nutrient, and so that's why we soak the beans and the grains and the seeds and the nuts. So maybe that could, you could try and see how you feel with that. So peeling the tomato and getting rid of the seeds, it may help with um, making it more. See, for some people, I didn't touch on that, there's a class of foods, it's called the nightshades, right? And so for some people, that causes inflammation. But you might, once you heal your gut, you might be able to reincorporate some of them. And some of them, like for instance, like I can eat tomatoes raw, but it's hard for me to eat them cooked. They cause pain. And so everybody's different how that works for them. But so it's a protection, right? Yes, yes. I, I didn't know that they were on the outside. I just knew that some of these anti-nutrients are produced by the plants, um, phytochemicals, for instance, to help ward off uh, invaders and pathogens, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, so oats is a type of grain, and so it would be good to soak them and to cook them. Nowadays, with the raw food craze, they're doing raw oatmeal, and so you're not cooking. And remember, I don't know if you were here yesterday, but we had talked about how with grains, you need to cook them thoroughly, and that would be a couple, two to three hours. You know, I, I'm not sure about the oats that are processed a little bit more and making it more easily um, um, hydrolyze that starch. I Probably you don't have to cook it as long. Because I think Yuchi Pines, um, Agatha Thrash, did some studies on the times that it took to hydrolyze the starch. And um, I think the more processed that it was, the less time that you have to cook it. Okay, this is a video, I, I don't know if it'll show, but this lady came last year, she had very bad rheumatoid arthritis. She was rapidly progressing. She um, had also a history of Lyme disease, but it was like within a matter of weeks, she went from being able to take care of herself to- And oh, Sherry, so this is my friend Sherry. Sherry is um, from Northern California, Los Altos. And Sherry is a um, entrepreneur. She has had her own businesses. She's been a, you had your own radio show too, right? Well, I did a lot of radio talk shows. That was wonderful. I didn't have my own show, but I did. Okay, I radio a, lot a lot of talk shows. And uh, now your, your, um, your company is what? Ellison's Towing. And so we have the AAA contract and the police contracts. And we service about 72,000 stranded people a year on the highway wow. so it's a lot to coordinate and it's a sick it was for me mm -hmm. a six day week job about 12 to 14 hours a day okay. I lived there um, so I just wanted to let people know that you were really busy and you were very health conscious you had been um, selling supplements for a number of years prior to that right. too and um, I was gluten free dairy free um, ate really well, exercised, did all of that. And then one day in August, what happened? 
I woke up with a stiff neck and I couldn't turn, even my neck even a slight little bit, and I couldn't bend my hands or my wrists, and I felt frozen. And I looked to my husband and it was so painful, like instantly I, I couldn't move without pain. It was just awful. Right. And it was really scary, you know, yes. to just wake up, one, go to bed one night, wake up the next morning and kind of go, what and what happened? Right. And I just want to share with everybody that you, after that, you, it just progressed so quickly. So fast. It went from in September, in August, going to Branson, Missouri and being on inner tubes in the water and enjoying myself and hiking and, you know, I could do everything. And then progressively from sep August, September until by Christmas, I was unable to dress myself, shampoo my hair, I couldn't drive a car, I couldn't make a single meal for myself. It was so scary because overnight I saw my hands transform from these little dainty hands to really thick mm -hmm. knobby fingers and swollen wrists. And, and that's, that's how it was when I met you um, a few right. few days ago actually. And you came in and you were walking around like that. In a lot of pain. In like, a lot of pain. I couldn't touch. I couldn't pull my pants up. It was just awful. And um, can you just show me like what you're able so to do? So now I can go like this. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be able to do a full heart. <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> As I can take them and yeah. But you know, I I and I had huge sacks of inflammation here. And so while I've been here, they put potato poultices on my hands. So I mm -hmm. go to bed every night and they'd have ground up potato wrapped around my fingers and my wrists and the swelling went down. Isn't that amazing? Potatoes it's like the first from the garden. Day. I know. I was amazed too. And how are you feeling? Like how does the rest of you feel? Because I felt like you were moving around really, really well today. I, I feel terrific and it's only been six days mm -hmm. and the greatest gift I've been given here is a road map to victory, over, mm -hmm. overcoming rheumatoid where I, the contrast was the doctor told me you will, you know, your hands are going to get all deformed and your ankles will and you won't be able to walk and, you know, so that. And then I have somebody else saying, well, this is what you need to change because I was doing so well, I thought, on the diet. It was so pure. Mm -hmm. But I learned here that um, I need to just eat everything. Okay. Yeah. Like no protein powders. I was, you know, mm -hmm. having my protein drink, but now I eat everything raw. Mm -hmm. I make all my own flowers, my nut butters, um, everything well, from well, the not, garden. Well, not all just raw, right? No, 70%. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I've learned 70% raw, 30% cooked, and it's delicious. And everybody here cleaned their plate, you know? Mm -hmm. So what I learned from this experience is that used to be an unsolved mystery to me. I didn't know what I was doing and I kept asking God, please, please, please show me the way, mm -hmm. show me your way. And it turned out to be completely from God's garden. Completely. So I'm praising God for this journey yes. and for the tender loving care. And I kept looking for everybody to get sick as they detox because I didn't want to come. I already felt horrible. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, if I get any more sick, and I was mm -hmm. weak, and I was tired, and I was feeling, because when someone goes through autoimmune, it's really, really a lonely journey. It is. And, yeah. you, and it's so scary because you're just watching your body change. Yeah. Now I'm watching my body change in the reverse Back. direction. Yes. And it's, I'm just filled with joy. I, I'm uh -huh. so grateful on this day. So that was Sherry. And isn't that amazing? She went from being fairly healthy to being very uh, disabled. Uh, when I met her, she was moving like this. And uh, just to see her. Potato poultices, yeah. Raw potato. Uh huh. You grate it, you squeeze out the water, and then you uh, put it, attach it to some, you know, usually it's like a plastic that we put behind. or. Uh, yeah, a uh, sandwich bag, it's a thicker, you know, and you might want to put a um, paper towel, some kind of paper and then the plastic to keep it in, you tape it all night. It gets kind of hot, kind of uncomfortable. 
I did not touch on rice and arsenic. It, it is also a grain, so it's something that some have recommended you only eat once a week if you're going to eat it. Um, I don't do grains a whole lot right now, so um, uh, yeah, it, we try to not use it so much because it's a grain and the arsenic issue. I have, I have, and I'm a little bit on the fence about it just because it's a nightshade and so, but, but I have heard for some people that it's been very helpful. And so I, I have tried it in the past, but I, I don't know enough about it to say one way or the other. But I just feel like everybody's different and uh, we can try and see, but it is a nightshade and so some people don't recommend using it. Okay, so what we're going to do, why don't we close this part with prayer, and then we're going to set up for the food demo, okay? All right. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for um, this day, for bringing everybody here. And Lord, I just pray, whatever that was shared here, that whatever it is, we, whoever needs to hear, you would help them to remember those things and apply them to their lives in a way that would be helpful. And um, now that we're going into this uh, next part, Lord, I just pray that you would guide, that we'd be able to do everything quickly, and um, I just pray the food would be tasty and uh, would bless our bodies. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so just give us about five, ten minutes.